Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to be talking about layered shaders, and this is a hypershade node for materials. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of hypershade work, so what I like to do is open up the hypershade as a panel in my UI by going to the Panels menu, Panel, Hypershade. So here's my hypershade in my UI. I can click on the channel box tab over here to collapse it down. So I'm literally just focusing on the hypershade for now. I do have a viewport uh, window stuck in my hypershade here. If you want more details about that, I do have information about how to put that in if you're not sure in the hypershade overview video. Uh, and I'll put a link to that in the upper right corner if you click the little eye icon. So the layered shader is very similar to the layered texture. Now we've already had a video going over the layered texture and again you can find a link to that in the upper right corner. The layered texture, I'll go ahead and bring it up real quick. If we go to other textures, we have here the layered texture. If I click this and open it up here, you see we have this work area. You can layer in different textures and they will layer on top of each other and I use the analogy of it very, being very similar to Photoshop where the very first texture on the left is over or on top of the layer below it which is on top of the layer below that and so on. And you can just plug in all of your 2D textures in here and apply an alpha, aka transparency, to those layers to see the layer beneath them and so on to create your combined effect. And then this is a texture that then with the out color gets plugged into your material, which would be a Lambert or a Blend or whatever. So that's a layered texture. So the layered shader, again, very similar. If I go to the surface area of Maya, we had to come down here we find layered shader. Let me go ahead and left click it to open it up. And look in the property editor here you see it's very similar. We had that work area, that green box here with which is kind of a placeholder layer and we have color and transparency. Transparency is very similar to alpha however instead of it being called alpha in this case since alpha is the uh, transparency of a texture this is the transparency literally of the actual material layer. So the layered shader works almost identically to the layered texture. So I do recommend checking out the layered texture for a really detailed look and how that works. The only main difference is that instead of layering textures, you're layering complete materials. So you can have an entire material network and then have it appear in the layered shader as a layer and then have another whole material network as a layer beneath it and blend them together. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to bring this over here to the side and let's go ahead and create two more materials. So again, I'm going to click over here on the surface and let's make a Lambert material and we can make a, for example, a blend material. So we have our Lambert and a Lambert material is a very matte material, not doesn't have any uh, specular highlights or anything and a blend material is a shiny material. You can see it here in the material viewer. So a Lambert, very uh, matte, like I said, and the blend, very shiny. So here's my layered shader. So what I can do is literally middle mouse click the Lambert 2 over here and place it here inside this work area. And I can click this little X to delete that green placeholder one. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the blend. I'll middle mouse click and drag it over here and you can place it inside the work area here. And you can see we have lines going everywhere now. If I click on the layered shader and click on this little button here which is the input and output connections button, left click, it'll kind of lay everything out in a bit more clean manner. Okay, so here you can see we have our two materials plugging into our layered shader. Let me go ahead and create an object in my scene. So I'm going to make a sphere and we'll scale it up. Press the 6 key to display textures, which I don't have any yet. But I'm going to minimize, click, and drag the layered shader onto the sphere to apply it. So right now this layered shader is applied to the sphere. So for the Lambert over here, let's go ahead and rename this to be checkerboard. because I'm, I'm going to apply a checkerboard texture to this Lambert material. So with the checkerboard material selected, I'm going to apply to the color by clicking this little black and white checker button, a checker texture. Left click that. You can see here now I have this checker texture applied to the checkerboard material. 
And for the blend, we can do the same, apply to the color of the blend. We can do a different uh, kind of texture. Let's say we do a, a noise, we can just to have something different. If I click on the layered shader here, we have our two layers. And th again, this works very similar to how Photoshop works. You'll notice on our ball that all we're seeing right now is the checker. We're not seeing the noise pattern that we have applied to the blend. That's because the checker material here is first in the list, which means it is on top of the blend, which contains the noise. Let me go ahead and rename that blend to noise like this. So now as I mouse over these two layers, you can see the first one is called checkerboard. The second one is called noise. Now the color and transparency of these layers, as I select them, you see is being mapped, has already been driven by something else. And what it's being driven by is the color and transparency of their respective materials. So if I were to increase the transparency of this checkerboard material down, you'll see how the noise appears on the sphere. And that's because the transparency of the checkerboard layer is being driven by the transparency of that material. So by adjusting the transparency of this checkerboard material, we're going to see that noise through it because of the layered shader. If I take the noise transparency down, you'll see now the ball is completely transparent because both layers are transparent. So just like with the layered texture, we can use masks on the first layer to show parts of the second layer. So this checkerboard texture is a very good uh, representation of being able to do that. If I select my Lambert checkerboard material, I can minimize click this checkerboard onto the transparency attribute of the checkerboard. So now you can see what happens. I can see that noise pattern now in the white areas of the checkerboard. Also because the checkerboard is a Lambert and the noise is a blend, only those noise areas are shiny. The checkerboard areas are matte, have a matte finish. They don't have any shininess to them at all. If we wanted to inverse this, we could. If I click on the utilities section of my create area and find the reverse utility node right here, I could, for example, plug the out color into the input of this reverse and then output that to the transparency of the texture. And so now you see we're getting an opposite result where the white areas of the checkerboard are visible and are matte and the black areas are showing the noise. So this reverse utility node can be used for something like that, reversing that color and, and then plugging that into the transparency. And so here with that white visible, you can see really clearly there, we have this divide of this specular highlight. If I click on the noise material, I can increase that by increasing that specular color. You can see how that specular highlight is increasing like this, but you're not seeing that at all on this white area of the checkerboard because that area is a Lambert. So you're getting not just layered textures, but also layered material types. So you can have that Lambert or matte area with a shiny area beneath it. So for example, one uh, really good example of doing this would be putting a label on a bottle, for example. So that would be one good practical use of using a layered shader. If you had a, a texture of a label and then a glass material and you layer those on top of each other using our layered shader here. And that's pretty much the gist of it. It's relatively simple, especially if you are familiar with how the layered texture works from the previous video. It works in much the same way. So I definitely uh, hope you have found some use with uh, the layered shader and how it can be used to get some interesting results by having different kinds of material types layered on top of each other and getting interesting results such as this one. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.